Hello and welcome to your in-depth horoscope forecast for September. This is for the Sun or the Ascendant. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. That means every time I release a video, you'll get an alert. Now also, if you'd like to ascend above zodiac sign astrology and embrace natal astrology, based on your time, date and place of birth, please check out my special offer of a 12-month forecast and a character analysis and get 30% off. Please see the link beneath this video for more information. Hello Capricorn and welcome to your in-depth forecast for September. This month begins with the Sun and Mars in your sector of adventure, the ninth house. This is very much where we like to travel, but we can travel in our minds. We can have a quest for knowledge as much as physically being on the move. So, of course, we're living in a very changed reality when it comes to moving around freely. So it may not be quite as easy to move in the way that you would like. But if you can break out and do something more spontaneous, I do feel there's every chance you will do that, particularly in the first 10 days of this month. And that's because Uranus, the planet of the unexpected, but also of the truth, is pushing you in your fifth solar house of creativity, self-expression and joy to try things that are different, to shake things up. So when we have a fifth house energy, collaborating with a ninth house energy, which can be quite daring, that points towards some kind of change momentum or opening up in your situation and also the seventh new moon in the sign of Virgo is going to be embracing that rather uh, sparkling energy of Uranus too but equally there's also a tremendous angle between Mars in the sign of Virgo and also Pluto in your sign across those first 10 days. Now when these two collaborate and these are the uh, shared rulers of the sign of Scorpio. It's a very passionate combination. When they get together, willpower it can really be quite incredible. So Pluto in your sign is or is or has been transforming. It depends on exactly where your birthday is, your world for a very long time. So the process really began in 2008. So if your birthday is right at the start of Capricorn, that probably was a time where you went through some pivotal alteration in your existence. If your sun or other key planets are later in Capricorn, I think the big changes are really coming now. But despite the fact that Pluto is in a retrograde, this angle to Pluto really points towards you taking control of the process in a very hands-on way. Because Pluto in the first house is very much about you transforming your reality in terms of you, the individual. The ninth house is very much about freedom. So I don't feel that you're necessarily going to want to collaborate so much as much as do things that help you to make your life more dramatic. But that may, may seem somewhat counterintuitive because your sign is very much about being applied, dedicated, very conscientious. You work through the processes in a very systematic manner and you really put that effort in. And that often means you end up being extremely successful or certainly having the respect of others for the level of industry you show. But that means that you often stick to the programme. And I think the earlier parts of this month are asking you to take a more radical view of what that programme could be. And if you need to shake it up and you need to take a firmer grip on your life direction in terms of the, the tiller on that boat that's steering your course, then do do it because these are quite radical planetary alliances which can give you a lot of courage to tear down some structures which are no longer serving their purpose for you. But that may mean going against that more security orientated part of your nature. Now, it's also true to say that Saturn, your ruler, is in a delightful link with Venus in your sector of success as this month begins. So it can be, if you're wanting to change things in terms of your work or employment, a case of who as much as what you know, because 
Venus can help you to charm or at least to develop or cultivate very positive relationships, whether it's through business groups, uh, other alliances, people putting in a good word for you, that's entirely possible from the 3rd through to the 9th. And someone's goodwill could be very constructive for you in a financial context. But equally, Venus across the same group of days clashes with Pluto. So if you try too hard or there is any kind of manipulation going on in order to achieve a goal or it's too nakedly obvious, then that could actually be counterproductive. So it's very important to be as natural as possible and not force the pace. And that's quite difficult when Mars and Pluto are in such a strident relationship and Uranus is asking you to break down any structures which are dull, predictable and samey when you're really wanting some kind of action or excitement to light up your world. Totally understandable. So there are a few key decisions that you need to make for yourself that I feel that you will make very well, especially knowing that there are these opportunities to make progress, but just a few gotchas in there as well. Now the seventh is that wonderful new moon. So the following month can be a terrific opportunity if you are able to get away, book a vacation or a holiday, or even if it's just going away for a few nights with some friends, I think it could prove to be extraordinarily cathartic for you if it helps you to tap into a freer part of your nature or just to escape the rigidity of some of the discipline, the self-discipline we've all had to show over the last couple of years. Now, from the 3rd to the 9th, I've told you about Venus's relationship with Pluto. But on the 10th, Venus actually forges or moves into a much more constructive location for you. It goes into the sign of Scorpio. And of course, Scorpio is very much passion. And we have that passionate alliance between the two rulers of Scorpio in the first 10 days too. So if there is somebody that you're really drawn to, I think it's possible in week three that something can start to develop at quite a pace. Now, generally when it comes to affection, you're not somebody who gets into things too rapidly. You like to really check out the credentials of your candidate. But because Venus is going to be in an opposition with Uranus, that could create an opportunity for you to be more impulsive, to be in the moment, to actually just enjoy yourself. And if that means getting closer, having some kind of connection with someone, whether it's in a playful way by dancing or singing or talking into the wee small hours, or it is in a passionate embrace, it could come about quite unexpectedly. But it wouldn't be a surprise if an introduction was made through your friendship group or it was someone you already know, but that relationship could go through a bit of a change as you get to know them better. But week three sees the sun replace Mars and forge a, a brilliant trine, which is 120 degrees, very enabling with Pluto in your sign. So the first ninth house angle really puts together in a very constructive way the concept of initiative. The first house is very Aries-like energy. So that's what Pluto's been urging you to do since 2008, is take a more single-minded approach to life, whether it's working for yourself, whether it's doing something more creative, whether uh, you're embracing parts of your nature that up until then, maybe you've been more inclined to play the game in terms of the way that you had been taught you should do in the earlier parts of your uh, life. But I think you have a huge opportunity in week three of this month to once again push things outwards and do something very, very exciting. And if it gets into the truth, the truth of who you really are and who you need to be, it really can be very life-affirming because the ninth house is about truth. It's about philosophy. So... If you're not able to travel but you're interested in someone's way of thinking or a spiritual dimension that really attracts you, this could become a big part of your existence from week three. Now the 15th sees Mars, a planet which is exalted in your sign, so you have a great relationship with Mars, 
sees Mars climb to the top of your horoscope. This is very important because of the following six weeks it's going to be in the sign of Libra. Now technically Mars in Libra is not such a good thing, it's known as being in detriment, but for you, you can use the balance of Libra, the air, uh, the air element to evaluate situations, but then you can add to it the confidence of Mars in the 10th house. So people with Mars in the 10th house often are actors, performers, musicians, like to naturally connect with people, can be enormously charismatic, and your charisma factor is really going to go up several notches with Mars's support. Now the important thing with Mars in the 10th house is not to be arrogant and not to think that your way is the only way. So if you handle the energy wisely and remember 10th house energy is very Capricornian so it's about being very responsible but if you see an opportunity to make progress and set goals which require a lot of determination Mars can really be supportive during that next next six week period. But on the 19th, Mercury goes into shadow. What does this mean? Well, in October, Mercury will rewind back as it goes into retrograde on the 27th of this month to a point that this shadow period begins at. So it's where it rewinds to, that's where the shadow begins. So uh, this means that Mercury is slowing down in your set of goals, ambitions, and how you link to the wider world. So obviously Mercury influences information and how we think, and how we monitor situations, how we evaluate things. So being very on the ball around all the things to do with your career moves, your big goals in life, is going to be critical because clearly Mercury retrograde does throw up some challenges in terms of cross wires. That just, we know that happens three, sometimes three and a half times a year. This year, funnily enough, Mercury is retrograde in all the air signs. So it's much more about how we think. It's about logic. But on the 20th, there is a full moon. And this full moon occurs in the sign of Pisces, which for you is about your everyday thinking. You know, communication through text messages, emails, chatting to neighbors, siblings. You know, hi to people on the street as you walk to work and this kind of stuff. But of course, Pisces can be a very dreamy drifting and sometimes dissolve in influence. So the management of ideas needs to fit with your emotions because obviously the moon is about emotions and security. The third house is more logical, it's more Gemini. So over the following two weeks, how you think and feel requires some kind of uh, it needs to come together, it needs to be joined together in a way which is meaningful. However, on the 22nd, we do have a really big event. We have the autumn equinox, the sun makes its way into the sign of Libra to join up with Mars and also Mercury. This begins the third cardinal quadrant of the year. Western tropical astrology is not based on moving planets in that will move in stars in the sky. That's the precision of the equinox. It's based on the uh, seasons and we have four seasons. So this is the start of the autonom autonomous season or the foolish you would say in the States. And of course, in terms of the Southern hemisphere, it's the start of the spring equinox. But Western tropical astrology was a construct based on Mediterranean culture. So this is an important phase to take a pause and think about how we're relating to situations because Libra is very much about our relationships, keeping things in balance, but for you, particularly professional relationships. And, you know, maybe you are going to be the person who's going to be employing someone if you work for yourself. Maybe you're going to be the person starting a new entrepreneurial enterprise, which is going to see you try to reimagine or re-envision your talents in a new way which will seek acclaim and you've been preparing for that through all these uh, desires to shake up your world earlier in the month and make it more stimulating and keep in with the truth of who you are now. If you're someone who's more of a dedicated uh, corporate person who sits inside of a big structure or construct um, 
you know, maybe Mars being in this part of your situation along with the autumn equinox and Mercury at this point in shadow suggests that you need to negotiate the politics within that organisation, but maybe there's a chance to learn new skills, to go on some kind of course, to uh, flex in a new way uh, to relate to those people within your organisation and it can be a great opportunity. I must stress Mars in the 10th house, if you handle it well, can be really incredibly valuable for you. But the 27th does see Mercury finally go into retrograde. As I mentioned before, and you know yourself, this can be a time when things do go awry. Mercury governs thinking, it governs transportation, it governs travel, it governs technology, it governs domestic appliances through its rulership of the sign of, Pis of Virgo. Sorry. So all those areas have a potential to be glitched, but what we can do is make sure the things that we can micromanage reduce that potential for problems. But in your 10th house, I think what Mercury's asking you to do is rethink, revise, reconfigure, and that's a rewind, so a retrograde, so think about the re. Don't see Mercury retrograde as only a negative thing. It's a thing to be watchful about, but not fearful about. See it as an opportunity. So for example, if you are in a big corporate position, and over the last year I've done loads of readings for people in some of the biggest blue chip companies in the world that you would have all heard of, and you know, it's been a very isolating time if you're a decision maker or you have a, a very important role because obviously a lot of people have been stuck at home and it's not necessarily always healthy to be isolated like that. So maybe that's taught you a lot about your needs or your role and you're wanting to find a new way of working. Maybe part of that is to work from home part of the time and be at work some of the time. But maybe it's the actual organisation that you work within that you've learnt a lot about as well. And that points towards some kind of big alteration. But because uh, retrograde Mercury and shadow Mercury square with Pluto in your sign, as this month draws to a close, just be aware that whatever you want to achieve is workable. Now you're the biggest realist of the zodiac. I mean, Capricorn people are just absolutely fantastic for keeping their feet on the ground. And of course you have that legendary sense of humour as well, which I absolutely love. But it is important at times to try to think through how other people may be playing the game or, or in some way working the system. So you need to be quite strategic as this month draws to a close. And that may mean being a bit crafty at times, because life, as you know, isn't always about being idealistic. You can leave that to people like me, the astrologers. <laughs> you know, we're the idealists, not necessarily the realists. But for you Capricorns, this is a great opportunity for you to break out this month really follow your heart's desire, see where it takes you. If that means shaking up some of your security, know that with Pluto, it's so uh, compelling that even if you try to resist it, it's probably going to be very difficult when it's forging such intense angles to the Sun and also to Mars, but equally with Uranus in the mix as well, I feel that you need a role which excites you a lot more. And that's really whether it's in your personal life or your professional life, the mission and opportunity of this month for you.